Hey Ram, how are you doing? Very well, very well, Satyajit. Good to see you. Good to see you, Ram. Uh, thanks for taking time out. I know how busy you are around this time of the year. Everybody yeah. seems to be busy with like lots of shows and a lot of things have opened up, right? Like uh, after the pandemic, things have changed quite a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. Uh, I mean, I, I see there's so many gigs uh, happening. Of of course, all the projects that was like sort of piling up for last last couple of years, everything suddenly has come come onto everyone's plate. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, um, uh, it's it's also a crazy time for uh, uh, for uh, any technical field in the industry because right now there's so much work that if you if you're technically proficient, you've just you're busy all the time. Wow. Uh, I mean, is it is it just a post-pandemic thing or was it before? Uh, I think it's passed? got to do with the explosion of uh, web series and, um, and and OTT platforms and digital media and YouTube and all of it. I mean, I think the biggest change has been our change in consumption patterns. Oh, and yeah. that I think post-pandemic, I don't think anybody pre-pandemic or during the pandemic anticipated it and really kept in sync. Mm -hmm. with how things were going to change. The consumption patterns have changed uh, drastically, radically. And I think overall, it's the industry is in a better place for it. Oh, that's nice to hear. That's really nice to hear. Um, well, before we kind of get started uh, with the whole conversation, I just wanted to kind of talk, uh, give a sort of a primer about uh, this uh, series of talks. Uh, and it's really nice. Uh, that IIT Bombay and Moody Indigo, they're just putting together this uh, series of talks. And this is kind of designed towards uh, people, uh, students primarily from around the around the India, um, different colleges and universities and um, people who want to take music as a career, music as a profession. Mm -hmm. So so we had a talk with them and then we kind of decided to kind of focus on five uh, primary areas. Uh, like music composition, uh, you know, singing and uh, playing instruments or music production or, mm -hmm. you know, live shows and stuff like that. So when it comes to music composition, I honestly could not find a better person than you to talk about that uh, because I have been following your music for, uh, I was just uh, talking to Saurabh that uh, I probably heard uh, this one, uh, uh, Tanhatil first, but honestly, I didn't know the, it was your music till uh, much later. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was, uh, I think I heard Colorblind first. Oh, okay. That was, that was the very first thing that I heard and I was like shocked. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was so amazing. It was so amazing and so ahead of its time. Um, and in fact, I think I had told you earlier that uh, I happen to have one of the thousand CDs that was produced. Uh, yeah. I, I still have the original CD with me. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, for, when it comes to music composition, I don't think, you know, I can think of a better person than you because literally you have done it all. Mm -hmm. You have done like uh, music composition for the films from independent, um, independent uh, music, uh, for ads, lots of ads, and uh, for 
that uh, you, you have sung yourself also mm-hmm. um, and and you you do the lot of music composers also they kind of outsource the technology part but i know you are a very hands on yeah 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 so so you have a uh, i mean we can have this session for several hours but i won't i'll not make it that long sure. uh, so we we want to kind of over, uh, get an overview and then um, the things that will help any budding uh, artist or budding budding uh, composer um, so we'll, we'll talk about that sure so uh, yeah before we get started we can just quickly go over a little bit of uh, your background i know mm-hmm. you started very early so you can just tell us a little bit about your background yeah i started professionally i think my first professional job was, uh, was when i was 16 years old wow. and yeah and i i did i started scoring commercials because that was the uh, one show fire industry that was uh, organized and uh, you got paid by check the film industry in those days paid by cash yeah. Uh, I used to really, really rattle my parents. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, being middle class people and they're not from the music industry, I was, uh, you know, the uh, the outlier in the family and decided to do music. They were very encouraging, but yeah, wow. I mean, I started I started professionally when I was sixteen. I did um, I did colorblind. Uh, I did the first album I did was actually with Sean. I did Loveology, and that was yeah. because. Uh, I did I did the music for Femina Miss India in uh, ninety four and ninety six, and after that I started. I mean, between those two years also, I worked uh, in a studio uh, because the technology in those days was very very hard to get by, and uh, it cost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So I what I decided to do was I decided to work in a studio where I would be the uh, the the uh, all in one show guy. I I was the engineer. I was the technical guy. I was the uh, the music programmer, uh, I was the arranger, and I was uh, the uh, the interface, like the, wow. the yeah. yeah, I was the interface as well with the clients and everything. So I did client servicing as well. In return, what I got is I got to work at night. Um, I got the studio to myself at night. So my average work day was 10, a, 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. was my wow. <laughs> yeah, for for a year. That's what I did. Wow. I would catch the I would catch the 4 a.m. bus back home, take a bath, and then come back to the studio. Uh, my wow. the journey was an uh, an hour either ways, so that's how I started. That's that's the core of uh, the journey that I I I, I um, that that got got me into the professional world because then I I could I got I got my first loan to be able to buy my own equipment and things like that. So that's actually that that studio is where I met Sean. Uh, he used to come uh-huh. sing jingles, and this was at Dinsha Sanjana studio in uh, Kaf Parade, okay. and um, I I mean I got to meet a lot of people there. So I, I became friends with Salim Merchant over there. Salim and Suleiman became my friends. Taufik Qureshi used to come over there to record. Um, uh, Sanjay Maru was in uh, Dinshah's mm-hmm. band at that time. So uh, we became, we all became like uh, really good friends at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I also started going out and started doing, you know, I was I was doing jingles all over the place. I was in studios all the time. So I would run into people like Ranjit Barot and uh, S. Anand Loy and uh, Shankar Mahadevan, of course. Shankar Mahadevan was my senior from school. So oh, yeah, really? so, yeah, yeah, yeah way senior to me but uh, yeah. I mean, uh, but yeah uh, he yeah. Was, from, was from the same school and uh, yeah so I, that's really what how my journey was literally just hustling trying to get work and uh, trying to learn how to be a professional composer i learned it on the job actually most of the time but i think i started composing songs when i was 9 years old composing and writing so mm-hmm. uh, my my dad is like he's so he's so sweet about this he actually has a record of like my earliest songs which are terrible nobody should hear that uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, I started. I started uh, kind of wood shedding at a very young age. I think I was by the time I was twelve, I was pretty convinced that I wanted to be a composer, and mm-hmm. I wanted to be. My, my my parents were very disappointed because they wanted me to be a singer, but I I, I felt that composition was my thing because uh, right from my childhood, I would flip the 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 LPs, my yeah. the, the LPs that my father had, and I would look at you know the who had done what and the credits and yeah. the production credits, and uh-huh. I would see these consoles on the back of the LPs where people are sitting at these massive consoles. Yeah. And I would always want to, I would be fascinated by that. And I wanted to be in that world. Uh-huh. So music making always, I mean, my heroes were always musicians. My heroes were always composers, producers. I mean, I knew about George, George Martin when I was 12 years old. Oh, wow. And yeah, and I, I was really, I was, I was really intrigued by the, by the process of uh, kind of uh, in those days, what was called making a record. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now it's music making. Mm-hmm. And, um, so yeah that's really how i started and um, i think the first 
a big lesson that I learned from, uh, I mean, of course, uh, uh, this is, uh, I'm talking purely about Hindi music, but I was, mm -hmm. my, my first love when I was about 14 or 15 was that I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to have my own rock band. And I used mm -hmm. to play in a rock band, which I think still, they still perform nowadays. And they're, they're a band from Chimbur called Pythagoras and the Right Angles. And oh. I was... There was, yeah. uh, I, th I think Sarosh and uh, that's right, that's Pad right. Pad Paddy were also part that's of it. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they, came, they came after you or they came before? No, 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 no. Sarosh, uh, Sarosh me, Jay Shankar, we are the founding members of the band. I was so oh. young, they used to call me Pram. <laughs> <laughs> I was the keyboard player then. In fact, we went and played IIT as well. I played IIT oh. when I was in school. Yeah. Oh, holy cow. Yeah, that was oh. crazy. Yeah, I was not even in the 10th standard. I, 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 was, I think I was 13 or something. When yeah. I went and played IIT, I played keyboards and I sing, I sang backing vocals and I was mad. And I knew Paddy from then. Paddy knew me from school and college. Oh, sweet. Um, knows me from school and college. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Paddy was very encouraging. There were other people around. He, he still who, is. You know, he still yeah, is. he's a fabulous guy. He's just, he's the yeah. same. He's a gem of a human being. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all of them, I'm friends with all of them even now. They're all great guys. And uh, I, they were playing covers and I wanted to make my own originals. So I started writing songs. So I quit the band and I, I went in a different direction. And um, I remember one of the gigs that we were playing somewhere, Pythagoras was playing and uh, we, we came off stage and uh, this band went on called Modus Operandi and uh, Siddharth Ashrekar was on guitar oh. and he was just unbelievable. I mean, he was so good mm -hmm. that um, I knew that I wanted to, I wanted to sit, sit I wanted to, 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 uh, to make music with Sid, you know, he was okay. a great, great, great talent but simply because there are, there are musicians and then there are artists, you know. Yeah. And yeah, he was, he, he's an artist. So yes. um, I, I, I mean, I started writing the songs for Colorblind and kind of structuring that uh, at a pretty young age. I used to, you know, one of the beautiful things that used to happen in advertising was that I would go, go to the studio and we would yeah. set up all our equipment and invariably they'd be recording the voiceovers and they'd be doing all that other stuff. Yeah. So I would set up at 11, but I would actually get to work with the video by yeah. around Three, three o'clock or three thirty. So I used to take okay. that time to write music. Oh, so I would not be, I would not be outside hanging out, playing, you know, Scrabble or uh, or chilling with my uh, friends. I'd be inside. I'd be writing music. So I was obsessive um, for mm -hmm. a long time. I was really obsessive, and um, I started putting, I started putting all that material together. And with Sean, later on, uh, we started developing Loveology. Loveology came out much, much later than it was made. I must have made yeah. Loveology when I was 18 or 17 or something. And he was uh -huh. 19 or 20 or something. Yeah. Uh, we were kids when we made Loveology. And the one lesson I learned very brutally was that uh, uh, dance music doesn't work in India. I mean, if you want to make uh -huh. dance music, you've got to make it in film. Or you got to do it like the Punjabis do it. Uh, okay. But like, you know, f f kind of you're seen as frivolous if you're making that kind of music. So I always felt that, I mean, the only way to be able to cut through with Sean was to be able to make a song that touched people, you know, that sure. had that Musafir Hu Yaro type of feeling. It had oh, that. absolutely. Uh, yeah, it had that kind of soul to it. And uh, that was the reason why I, I I was, the next thing I wanted to do with him was Tanhadil. And I was so sure because the, the song came to me in one go and including wow. the hook, uh, including uh -huh. Tanha, Tanha Safa, that those words also came in. The chorus. Everything, the chorus came in in my head and the whole song came in one go. And wow. that's the that's the miracle with composition, actually. You don't know how it comes. You really mm -hmm. don't know how it comes. But I I think it's very similar to, uh, I mean, the, the it, these are horrible analogies uh, yeah. because not none of them are perfect. Yeah. But one of the analogies that I give people is, is it's like deep sea diving for pearls. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. so you go, you go with a little satchel and you have to dive into the, into the ocean mm -hmm. and you have to find these kind of, you have to find these oysters and you put them into your satchel and you come back up and some of them will have pearls and some of them won't have pearls. Uh -huh. um, but you have to love the process. You have to love deep yeah. sea diving. Yeah. So, so that's really what composition is like. It's, it's kind of like a deep sea dive, you know, you have to, you have to do the work. There's and no... I, I, I think I think sometimes, sometimes also you, you keep building uh, stuff on your own and so, uh, it may not work at that point of time, but you know, sometimes it'll, uh, maybe that frame of mind, it probably doesn't work, but it might work later for some other oh, situation. For sure, for sure. And so many songs that I composed for something else got used elsewhere. I mean, uh, every song comes with its own destiny. Every song has its own journey. Like mm -hmm. um, uh, Ori Chereya was originally composed, the, the melody, the, the Mukhra was composed for Khaki. 
and mm-hmm. um, oh. uh, yeah and it didn't work in that in that in that, uh, in that yeah. situation for that i composed mere mola karam ho karam which was sung uh-huh. by richard sharma and uh, um, this this song which was orichiriya's uh, the, yeah. the original lyrics was suna suna that's how i had composed it yeah and yeah. i just kept it in the back burner and then 10 years later you know uh, it found the right home yeah 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 so you have to you, you can't um, you can't get precious about these things you have to be mm-hmm. able to um you have to have a repository of music you can't mm-hmm. yeah you can't get precious i mean people keep asking you know like sometimes um people are like you know i aren't you afraid that sometimes you know like sometimes you the ideas will run out or you know the muse will desert you mm-hmm. or you know you'll be you'll be bereft of ideas yeah. but that is the idea the idea is to the idea is to um is to let your ego go to realize that you're not uh the source <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're just you're just a medium uh, things are flowing yeah. through you and um in this lifetime even if you make as much music as ilai raja you're just a yeah. drop in the ocean of music uh-huh. uh, none of us have made any as much music as raja none of us will ever make as much music as raja yeah yeah uh, the genius but uh-huh. even he is a drop in the ocean yeah you know? well so, yeah that's right yeah that's music right. is an ocean it's it's, it's yeah. insane how 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 vast it is so uh, you said your uh, so your parents were very supportive of uh, you taking up music at a very early age so did you actually formally learn from somewhere uh, yeah so i learned uh, i learned 6 to 7 years of um, of uh, carnatic vocal then i did about 4 years of hindustani vocal and i did 2 years of um, of uh, no 3 years of uh, 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 piano training with with another Two years of um, of um, uh, theory, so total oh, okay. five years of of piano as well. Okay, so so you uh, like officially you uh, I, you're like literate in the sense you can read and I, read and write. I can read and write, but I learned okay. while I was working. Uh, I learned okay. as as I was working. I uh, yeah yeah yeah, and really a lot of people helped me out. Yeah yeah, well at the age at which you started, I'm I'm sure. you you actually learned a lot on the job itself yeah yeah so uh but for most of the people uh, probably it is not the case that they uh, got into it so early people probably get into like a professional music probably much later in their life so what would you say about like this like role of mentors uh, or early education or early music education or something what would you say about that music education is fantastic uh it's it's important um but again it just it depends on the individual you know it depends on who you are and how you perceive music the i feel that it's kind of music education is like having a good vocabulary true so having great vocabulary doesn't make you a great writer but mm-hmm. without good vocabulary you can't be a great writer <laughs> you know mm-hmm. or a, or a, or you can you can't write more than two novels you know mm-hmm. so so having a, a a greater vocabulary will help massively in having a longer career in mm-hmm. having a, a a much more trendless career you will not be a, a victim of trends like for example mm-hmm. if somebody does like you know i keep telling kids like i remember about 5 6 years ago some kids i knew were fantastic at dubstep Mm-hmm. yeah so and i told them what what happens when dubstep is uh, is out and the next big trend is in you know what are you what are you going to do then uh-huh. so that's the thing i mean uh, i don't think music education by itself um is is the is is the solution but at the same time it is i think an indispensable part of your journey as a working uh, professional Mm-hmm. if you want to be if you want to be that because i feel that that's the most satisfying journey uh, that's the most satisfying part of my journey mm-hmm. the most satisfying part of my journey is not the is not the 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 the, the attention or the fame on um, that the, the i mean when when people like your song it's there's nothing better it feels amazing yeah. but the most satisfying part of my life is my daily process you know Oh, wow. that's yeah that's the most satisfying part it's that's the magic of uh, of being a musician and living a musician's life a, a working musician's life is that mm-hmm. you you don't know how the day goes man it's crazy yeah. there's not enough hours in the day for a musician because you can be playing and suddenly the sun has set 
you know <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> Wow, that is that is incredible that you enjoy the the whole creation process so so much. That's amazing. Um, but uh, again, you're taking back to the the education part. Uh, if somebody has been learning, there has to be a point has to come when they have to kind of decide that okay, now I have learned, I have enough tricks in my bag that I want to go and uh, try to become a full time musician. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. The, 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 the key to that is actually really simple. Is that do you have something to share with the world? You know, mm -hmm. do you have any stories? Do you have any pain? Do you have any love? You know, do you have we all do? Yeah. And we have a unique perspective and we have a unique way of seeing the world. Mm -hmm. And we have a unique way of, of processing our emotions. And that mm -hmm. is really where the music is, you know. And mm -hmm. I was just, and I keep telling this to people also, play to your strengths. You don't, mm. I mean, like, for example, music education and the importance of it. Life is also a very important music education, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's an art education as well. So I can give you an example of, uh, of two very diverse uh, people and how their personalities influence music. On the one hand, I can give you the example of S.P. Balasubramanyam, who's... Mm -hmm. um, Again, I don't think he was like formally trained, though he is mm -hmm. trained, but he's not formally trained. The man had an insane ability, an insane mm -hmm. vocabulary for a for a person uh, to have. I mean, just the, just forget about all the other work he's done in his life. If you just take the soundtrack mm -hmm. of Shankara mm -hmm. it's it it is as spectacular as the Taj Mahal. It's ridiculous how incredible that that uh, that accomplishment is. Mm -hmm. When you, it's aged like Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, when you listen mm -hmm. to it today, you go like, how did he do that? How did they do that? You know, how did they mm -hmm. assemble that? It's an incredible achievement. And that man has also sung, like, you know, some of the most, uh, some of the most light, lightweight pop songs, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. like Rajshree films and, you know, like, mm -hmm. Hum Kehen Kaun and <laughs> yeah, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And his personality shown through. I'm, mm -hmm. You may like it, you may not like it, but that man's personality shone through. You know, mm -hmm. his songs always carried his personality. He brought his personality and his love and his passion and his immediacy to the music. But he had a huge vocabulary, and the man had amazing ability. And mm -hmm. on the other hand, you have someone like Lucky Ali, mm -hmm. okay, who doesn't have a very vast vocabulary, mm -hmm. is not is not the greatest pitcher in the world, mm -hmm. but what personality and honesty you know mm -hmm. when you hear and what originality when you don't even need one line of a song to get over to know it's a lucky ali song mm -hmm. you know it's just brilliant personality and his voice carries sukoon in it you know there is yeah. such a there's such a brilliant soul. Soul. soul soul and soul and a simple soul mm -hmm. it's he he uncomplicates the complicated you know mm -hmm. so there is you have to play to your strengths that's really what I feel. That's what you have to come arrive at after education, after your music education. You have to play to your strengths. You have to know what you're good at and what your story is. And you have to stick to that. And you have to bring that personality to everything. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, when I when I take a song to someone like Sukhvinder, it mm -hmm. becomes Sukhvinder's song, you know, because mm -hmm. he has the Sukhvinder filter. Yeah. And th that's the reason why I feel like, you know, I mean, Sukhi's such a good composer also. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because of the fact that he sees there's a Sukhi filter and he yeah. hears your song and uh -huh. he'll hear it, he'll hear it the way I sing it, and then he'll sing it and suddenly it's become his song, you know. Yeah. And that's personality and that's music and that's the joy of collaboration and that's the joy of you know of working with, with musicians. Like I mean, Sanjoy Das as a guitar player has that. I'll I'll sing him oh. something and he'll play it and it'll be something completely different, but it's magically unique and and bapis you know Bapi, yeah, yeah 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 so so that's that's what we're looking for you're looking for personality and i the thing is again every generation has their maestros yeah know? so i'm this generation i'm so proud of them i mean people are constantly beating on them and you know constantly um uh, uh, you know t t worrying about the future uh -huh. i think the future is in great hands yeah. there's yeah. so much incredible talent out there they're making us look uh, uh, slow. <laughs> that's uh, that's amazing positivity right there. Um, so, 
again, if somebody wants to become um, like a career musician in, in India, how much of the Indian context they have to develop, uh, like whether it's like the rich uh, classical music uh, heritage uh, or anything like the, the Bollywood music or Karnatic or Hind Hindustani or Ghazal or Tumris or how much of the Indian vocabulary they have to uh, gather? Gather it as you go. It's not, um, it's not, you know, the, 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 um, uh, it's not a race, but having said that, I think without an Indian vocabulary, I think your, your, your career has a very, very limited span. It uh -huh. has an extremely limited span because the, the beauty of Indian music is that it's probably the only music in the world where we still have maestros in the mainstream. We still have poet laureates in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. We have a, a music culture that that is so unique that you know the, the West has not been able to 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 uproot it and mm -hmm. uh, supplant their own sound here. We mm -hmm. borrow what we like from them, but we make it our own. You know, and yeah, I absolutely. love that. I love yeah. that. And that's what I think is the beauty of Indian music. I think even the next generation has that ability of being able to kind of take from the West and make it our own and make something special out of it. So I feel that, I mean, I, I personally feel that you can't have a really long career unless you have mm -hmm. a certain respect and a certain um, um, humility to learn, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your roots. Uh, how much of learning is also listening, actually? I would say almost 80% of it is listening. Oh, wow. Yeah. Incredible. And what is, what is your listening like uh, during childhood? Yeah, that was crazy, man. So I grew up in a household where my father was obsessed with Carnatic music and, and uh, rock and, and funk and world music. And I had crazy records. I had like Manu Dibango, this African funk, Soul Makosa was the album, yeah. which was then sa sampled by Michael Jackson. You want to be starting something. Um, yeah. Mama say, Mama say, Mama Mama uh -huh, Mama yeah, say, yeah. Mama say. That's, that's, that's Sol Makosa. That's, that's Manu Dibango. He's a South African jazz oh, was, musician. Was it, jazz yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, Santana also does that in his life. Yeah, yeah, no, no. This is South African. This is like hardcore. Of, uh, okay. It's called uh, it's called Makosa and Makosa okay. Funk. It's like Manu Dibango is like the founder of that. And uh, Quincy Jones kind of, that was before sampling. They actually re-recorded it. And mm -hmm. they gave him credits for it. I, I don't, I don't know what the exact, this thing is that. But, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, that's, that's Manu Dibango. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I grew up with that and crazy world music. I, uh, my dad collected a lot of eclectic music. He would just pick up. I was obsessed with LPs. That was my first toy. My mm -hmm. my, my father gifted me. Uh, I mean, basically, I just I kind of hijacked my father's LP player. And uh, yeah. even when I was a kid, before I could talk, I could mount a record and like you know place the needle on. Put, put the needle. Yeah, 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 place the needle on which song I wanted. So uh, Harry Belafonte and yeah, just yeah. very wide music, Rare Earth, Jimi Hendrix. Uh -huh. um, Mahavishnu Orchestra, just mad stuff. I mean, it's just so eclectic. Wow. Uh, and um, uh, Palgat Mani a year, and mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, all the great, all the great uh, Madre Mani a year, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, all the great uh, uh, ma maestros of um, uh, T. N. Krishnan. So I grew mm -hmm. up on that kind of music. I grew up on a lot of uh, uh, really <laughs> like hardcore. Uh, uh, diet of that and my mother was completely into bollywood music so from my oh, mother wow. but yeah my mother from my mother and my mother had a very she had a very unusual memory for um for hindi specifically hindi film music because she segregated songs by composers mm -hmm. so i think in my turning a composer i think is my mother's fault <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because she she was very clear that you know she was a huge fan of Madan Mohan she was a huge fan of she was a huge fan of the music that Pancham had done with Shakti Samanta uh, and, you know and and okay uh, Pancham and Majru Sultan Puri had done with Nasir oh. Hussain and so we had like separate rows of different like S D Burman with Chetan Anand like I yeah. so I grew up with that history I I grew up with the names uh, yeah because my because of my mother's love for the details wow that's uh, that's like finding those details back in those days all was also not that easy you know to find all the credits like who composed who wrote the things or what whose movie like you said shakti savanta so yeah. 
you have to also know who made the movies you know it's yeah. like a completely two different yeah things. that's and true I, i'm that's so true. glad that you know she actually sort of gave credits to all of these people associated with making yeah. the music yeah that's, that, that's that's it's part of the reason why i grew up like that and um, yeah. um i was really obsessed with the with the whole process of music making yeah so that's really what what my my listening was i i was always shocked that people didn't listen to eclectic music <laughs> yeah. i was always kind of surprised that you know yo you don't listen to world music or oh, that's strange you know? i i always yeah. thought it was quite quite unusual yeah then i i got into rock music because of my friends and i uh, i had other friends who used to you know kind of loan me lps and mm-hmm. um uh, the the chembur i grew up in was really really diverse man mm-hmm. i i had a lot of people out there with crazy l- l- record collections and mm-hmm. uh, i used to go over to their house and sit and listen to records um it was not like it is today right music today is just flowing off your phone mm-hmm. but those days you actually had to make yeah. the effort and and yeah. and if you went to listen to a you went to listen to an album you mm-hmm. listen to the whole album man you just get uh, yeah. quiet yeah. yeah i remember the first time i heard moving pictures uh uh-huh. in, in uh, uh, rush the rush album moving pictures uh-huh. oh my god my world changed it was insane i couldn't believe what was happening i couldn't believe mm-hmm. the speakers of you know when when i heard tom sawyer for the first time oh okay. my goodness man my life changed with neil pert you know okay yeah it was insane and uh, so i remember i that's what i'm saying i i barely remember any stories of my childhood i have no memories of school i have virtually no memories of college in fact a lot uh-huh. of people from my college and school are offended when we meet because i i can't recognize anyone but mm-hmm. i can i can i can remember the exact moment when i heard purple rush. haze yeah yeah or i remember i remember hearing rush i remember hearing uh, um certain songs by the beatles Uh, you know and, and I, i remember hearing yes owner owner of a lonely heart uh-huh. like it was yesterday uh-huh. man the first time i heard that song oh my god the production on that was just seminal yeah. so yeah those kind of memories you know i mean that's that's my whole life my whole life is kind of marked yeah. in music wow incredible and uh, i was in fact going to ask you about like this approach to like different uh, different genre of uh, different style of music but you already ans- answered that like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's so rich uh and in fact talking of which uh, you also produced uh, which is like i come from odisha and you also produced rangabati which is like something that we have grown up with yeah. and then, that was like one of the songs that i sang on the stage when i was like in the second or third grade for the first wow. time i went on the stage and i sang that wow so it is incredible what you did with that song with rituraj and uh, what's what's Mitsuna. the rapper Yeah. Yeah, and the two, and the two kids yeah the two kids yeah 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 uh, do, do uh, rajesh Daddy. rajesh and uh, rajesh and tom cat yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i mean so what you did with that song is uh, incredible incredible oh thank you yeah thank yeah, you yeah um uh, cool uh so now uh, we'll also we'll talk about the sort of the core topic here which is you know making money uh, you know composing music right mm-hmm. and in my mind i can think of a couple of different uh, avenues and you can correct me if i'm wrong um one is like composition when whether you are composing for movies or tv or web series or ott or ad jingles and mm-hmm. that is one one way and the other one is you know performing uh, whether you're performing like your songs or in many other cases also people perform all different kinds of uh, you know concerts whether it's like a cover show or whether it's uh, their own songs or anything like that and then there is the the third third type is teaching music right so we'll we'll talk about all the three things and of course you being you so let's just start with the the composition part and then all the different kind of compositions that you have done and you have been doing and so could you talk about that and making money from that aspect sure So let me talk about the first aspect of of making money in music which is that one of the things that that you must realize when you turn into a professional musician or a composer like I am is you have to have your finger in many pies you can't rely on any one industry for your for all your income that's that's what I've learned over time sometimes extremely painfully I've learned this lesson okay. um and also it gives you a great perspective like for example if you only do commercials uh-huh. you really don't know what your capabilities beyond a minute uh-huh. okay but if you're only doing films 
your life is measured in years you know uh, every project takes forever sometimes what happens like for example between delhi belly and um, uh, after talash and uh, fukre and race i worked on five films that got shelved wow so i made the full soundtracks and the movies got shelved yeah so it was really really painful because the songs couldn't get used elsewhere and they're still sitting around so uh, when the songs got shelved if the movie got shelved can't you you know bring the songs back and to use it elsewhere yes you can sometimes you can sometimes what's happened is that it's already been picturized and oh. the rights have already been signed off so you oh. can't get it back that's the first problem the second aspect of it is sometimes the song is very specifically made for that particular scenario Mm-hmm. so if even if you take it out you're going to have to rewrite the whole song and you're going to have to restructure it so mm-hmm. you know it takes a certain amount of work to do that now anyway i actually some of them i'll pro- probably put out as singles now but mm-hmm. what all i'm trying to say is that that process sometimes can be heartbreaking you know mm-hmm. and you work on a film sometimes it's a two year process you know or it's 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 two years from your work beginning to the release date mm-hmm. and you're just working on it all the time you know and and uh, the a commercial doing a commercial which gets over in two days mm-hmm. gives you a great relief you know it gives you like that fantastic feeling of okay it got done i mm-hmm. started it today tomorrow the clients came and heard it fantastic yeah. yay got paid super you know so it's nice to have that kind of release also you know it, uh-huh. it gives you a, it gives you a different kind of perspective and it gives you a different kind of income then mm-hmm. there is the uh, live performance uh, arena now mm-hmm. as a composer i don't perform live that much um mm-hmm. uh, but when i do it's so much fun because i get to meet mm-hmm. all my musician yeah. buddies we get to hang out we get to rehearse we get to have yeah. fun and then we go and uh, we go and play live so yeah. it's another kind of experience and it's another kind of income it it yeah. it helps as well and it's something worth building over time you don't sure. have to do it in a hurry but mm-hmm. and also what happens with that kind of situation is that you also develop a certain rapport with certain musicians Mm-hmm. and that that flows into your recordings as well you know so that's the kind of rapo like for example yeah. i have with with San, sanjay das with bappi you know yeah. because yeah. he plays live with me all the time yes uh, i have that connection with him i have that ke- connection with keshav ayangar on bass mm-hmm. so i remember uh talking to keshav about the bass line of katte when we were working on it wow and i i had arranged every note of that song literally like i had arranged uh-huh. the the guitar riffs to the keyboards to the to the scratches to the how the transitions are going to be the key changes mm-hmm. the violin lines everything i had written mm-hmm. i had not written the bass line oh. and i had told keshav that i'm leaving it to you because i need a bass line that i can't think of and i write bass pretty well i i okay. I, i have a good uh, i have a good understanding of how bass works so i i mean like uh-huh. for example if you listen to a song like tanha dil yeah i've played everything on that song so except uh-huh. for the except for the uh, for the swarlin line which is okay. played by uh, uh, by rajendra ji i've played literally every note on that song uh-huh. uh so doing that also gives you an understanding of how those instruments work uh-huh. so so when you say we played uh, every part of the song meaning you actually recorded the scratch of every uh, part and then you later later you got no 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 so i i i like for example i wanted a a Uh, like a mandolin to play certain lines like a looping kind of riff on the right side so i played it on keyboard it's all it's oh. all like it's all uh, okay uh, it's all programmed programmed yeah it's all like uh, it's all sequenced on a, on a sequence yeah, yeah, yeah but you have to do it right so uh-huh. you learn how to be your own arranger as a composer and in fact uh-huh. to be very honest with you the aspect of composition that we call composition in india which is writing the melody yeah. is actually mm-hmm. what is in the west called as top line writing okay they call it top line writing which is that you write the top line okay. but they consider the rest of it also to be composition okay so it's actually a much more nuanced way of looking at composition in india what we do is we don't see that as composition uh-huh. so for example uh, if you take uh, a song like another one bites the dust mm-hmm. yeah so oh no let, let even better example uh, let's take under pressure which became okay. ice ice baby right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the bass line bum 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 that is composition okay it's not arrangement 
Uh-huh. Because without that, there's no song. Mm-hmm. You understand okay. what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There, yeah. even that is in the West, even that is considered composition. So, if you if you're talking about where the roots of composition are in the in the West, uh-huh. it comes from the world of Beethoven and Mozart and and classical music, where the composer would write everything, mm-hmm. what we call the arrangement today. Mm-hmm. That's not arrangement. Beethoven and Mozart were not just writing the top lines; they were writing mm-hmm. the entire harmonies. They were writing uh, the arrangements and who would play, who would play what, like what would mm-hmm. the woodwinds play, what would the strings play, what would the brass play, what would the, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was that was what that's the root of composition. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas in, in in the Hindi film industry, it's top line writing. Okay. You know, uh, so I learned this early as well, and I I wanted to be able to write more than just the the top line yeah so so uh so like for example if you take a song like um Bhag Ke no let's take oh. Bhag Ke Bos, for example okay. mm-hmm. i'll come to jilizar as well but like say Bhag Ke Bos, uh the first music mm-hmm. the, the solo that bapi plays yeah, then yeah. he plays like a full shred solo yeah, at the yeah. end which is bapi uh-huh. completely but okay. the first solo is written by me that's written by me. Like uh-huh. the, for example, on Gile Zara, pum 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 pum. That's that's part of the song. Yeah. That's part yes. of the composition. Mm-hmm. So you can't alienate that. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So so that to me is where the magical music also lies. The magical music lies in the fact that if I'm working with you, I will and if I need you to arrange a song for me, I will give you a lot of information. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will give you like, I will give you the chords, I will give you the, the rhythms, I'll give you exactly where I need it to be. I need, I need like, you know, my, my music pieces. That's how I like to collaborate. But there mm-hmm. are musicians whom you develop a shorthand with, and they come on board with stuff that it just blows your mind, you know, it Absolutely. just completely takes you back. You uh-huh. know, and, and you get you get uh, great material and you get co- collaborative ideas. Yeah. And that's the second aspect of it, which is that making money is also a collaborative effort, which mm-hmm. is that always collaborate, always mm-hmm. work with people who know more than you, always ask uh, stupid questions mm-hmm. uh, because there are no stupid questions. The only stupid question is when you ask something 10 times and somebody's explained it to you and you're asking mm-hmm. it for the 11th time. But the, I think even that's not stupid. That's also okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you know, collaborate. Collaborate with people who are better than you. Find out what you're good at. Get mm-hmm. better at it. And build your vocabulary. And work in different media. Work in web series. Work on live shows. Work uh, work in advertising. Work in film. Mm-hmm. Make your own music. Put it out on YouTube. Uh, put it mm-hmm. out on streaming platforms. And that aggregated income that you get, mm-hmm. that is is substantial. Mm-hmm. It's way yeah. more than uh, than just working in one medium, unless of course, unless of course there is one exception. If you love background score, yeah, I was going to come to that. Okay. Yeah, if right. you right. love background score, and I love scoring. I I do the scores for all the films that I've worked on. I I absolutely okay. love doing scores. Um, some of my heroes are actually uh, uh, the great score composers, like you know Bernard Herrmann, Leonard Bernstein. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I mean, that's the gold standard of harmony. It doesn't get better mm-hmm. than that. Uh, all the way to you know our own composers. I mean, AF, some of A.R. Rahman's background scores are absolutely just unbelievable. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the same with uh, with Raja sir and his background mm-hmm. scores. Um, M.S. Vishwanathan did some great background scores. Madan Mohan did some great background scores. S.D. Burman did some fantastic ones. R.D. Burman, of course. So there's we have another history of fantastic scores. Mm-hmm. And today in the industry background score is deeply deeply valued in fact if i think if if i can name one aspect of our filmmaking that has mm-hmm. grown um magnificently and mm-hmm. has grown immensely over the last two decades i would mm-hmm. say it's uh, cinematography and background score mm-hmm. you know yeah uh, they they both the technical aspects of those both i mean like for uh, for example a film like kgf you know mm-hmm. it's there's no KGF without the score. There's no Vikram mm-hmm. Veda without the score. There's mm-hmm. no, uh, uh, I mean, there's so many, so many films. So yeah, many yeah, films yeah, yeah. have fantastic scores. Yeah. So uh, I, I know you also now work on a lot of like web series and uh, stuff like that. So 
how is that any different or there it's just the same process wise uh, when you work for a film or a web series are they any different no fundamentally they're, the, they're they're pretty much the same except that i think in a web series i mean i think you just think about the the duration of it it's like kind of like working on three movies mm -hmm. it's just duration yeah. is really really long so yeah. your teams have to be slightly i mean i think they have to be more durable and they have to be able to kind of they don't they shouldn't irritate on repeat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then they're, they're not probably as many songs also. Probably the films have like a lot more songs than the web series, right? Am I right? Or... Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Even films have much, much lesser songs. In fact, now web series have quite a few songs as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that is another very good change that's happening is that a lot of independent songs are getting licensed to web series. Okay. So it's really good for indie composers. You yeah. can uh, find a good... Uh, you can find a good representative who can license, help license your songs to mm -hmm. OTT uh, shows. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them license it non-exclusively, so you can mm -hmm. actually keep your rights mm -hmm. and give it just a license. Yeah, so uh, how much of the independent uh, music making you do nowadays or you get to do? Because I know you, you're you like constantly working on like different ad jingles, web series and movies. Do you still put out your like independent singles or albums or anything like that? I think 2023 I'll be putting out a lot more uh, okay. because the songs have just been sitting around and I haven't done much with them and everybody in the studio is really angry with me. Uh -huh. So I think 2023 I'm going to put out a lot more music. Okay, okay. And uh, I think you also did another Odia folk song very recently also, right? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. We just uh, put out Rasol Ke Libo, okay. which is another uh, Sambalpuri song. Okay. Which I did a kind of, uh, I did an updated version of it and Sona has sung it and uh, it's a, I, lo I love that song. It's yeah, such yeah. a great, great tradition of uh, music. Uh, I mean, <coughs> excuse me. During lockdown, we also did a, we, we put out another song called Ahe Nilo Soilo, mm -hmm. which is a very beloved song of, uh, of Odisha. That's right. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, it's just something we do. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a kind of way to be able to connect back to the roots. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, invariably what happens is I learn a lot from those songs. You, you learn True. St True. unusual structures, unusual ideas. Melodically, they go to places that, you know, conventionally in pop songs, you don't go to. Uh -huh. So I love working on them and I love yeah. uh, putting out that music. Russell uh, Gilligan is just out now. Mm -hmm. And uh, one uh, other uh, thing about like learning is also teaching. Actually, when you teach, you also learn a lot. So uh, have you dabbled with uh, teaching at all or uh, do you? Um, <laughs> no, actually, the, the, the thing with me is that I've had a lot of people intern and work under me and then kind of go on and, and have uh, careers as well. Yeah. So I feel very proud of that. I've, I'm very uh, emotionally uh, kind of satisf satisfied by that, that people who've worked with me are now, are now successful composers and musicians awesome. in their own right. That feels great. Um, mm -hmm. But... In terms of teaching composition, I feel it's like it's just a pointless idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah mean, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Maybe others can do it, and I think yeah. there are some people on 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 uh, Instagram who do it really well. But uh -huh. I think, I think I'll have to, you know, I'll have to kind of assemble a module. I'll have to. Uh, it's it's something I can do, but yeah. I'll have to think about it a lot more. I haven't really thought about it deeply enough. I know there are some, uh, like, for example, I, I know that people have benefited a lot from certain kind of master classes that other people, other composers have done. Exactly. And I think what you can teach is a way of thinking, is a way of approaching uh, composition. I think you can mm -hmm. do that. I think that's possible. Yeah, 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 uh, absolutely. Uh, we have had, like, at Live Demi also, we have had like, a lot of people uh, who have done master classes on, like, not exactly composition, but again, you know, deconstruction of a song. Uh, yeah. So there are all the different aspects. There's production aspect. There's you know, there's a melody line. There's a whole uh, harmony, the the vocal harmony, or there is there's the whole rhythm section. So the different approach of you know putting all these pieces together to make a big hit song, 
it takes a lot of thinking actually a oh, lot yeah. of, there's, there's a lot of method and so they talk about those methods and i think those uh, sessions salim himself has uh, done a, quite a uh, quite a few of those sessions mm -hmm. and i think those sessions are golden yeah of course of course yeah, yeah. It's actually that's the smartest way to do it is to break down the work that you've already done because mm -hmm. it's a way of also for yourself reminding yourself you know how you how you arrived at that place because yeah. when you're actually doing it it's mostly instinct that's driving you yeah. Uh, yeah but once you arrive there then you can kind of go backwards and see yeah okay that's what I, that's mm -hmm. you know that was that that was the reflex then but that was actually your intuition guiding you the right way yeah 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 it was actually so sweet that. Uh... Uh, Salim uh, did one of the first uh, sessions that he did was uh, a song called Orepia, which is a really a big song. And yes, but it was like a, uh, but it was like a twenty-year-old uh, project, and he really had to go uh, down the tubes and just find that uh, yeah. the pro project, and he had to actually recreate that environment because a lot of softwares and everything have changed also. So he yeah. had to recreate that environment to be able to run that project again. And then yeah. he showed showed all the different parts of the project. So that was really, really nice. And definitely, you know, we need to get you into our studio room to do some of those sessions for, for, with your songs as well. Sure, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, awesome. the beauty is like cer certain kind of projects are very different from the others. Like, for example, sure. Talk Studio, we went live. And we are one of the few people to have recorded everything live on the floor. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, that entire... A session is, is is a very very different session from the other ones which are purely studio productions mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of exciting to be able to show how you arrive at not just the song but also like for example the different drum sound for Shundari Komala versus Aigiri Nandini versus Kare. yeah so yeah, you know, yeah yeah it's it's there's also that that aspect to it which is how do you arrive at those kind of sounds how do you how do you customize uh, each yeah. song's uh, sonic palette true 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 um how much of the uh technology part uh, right now music making process is a very very technical process mm -hmm. so now uh i know you you are quite a wizard uh, in in that sense you are you're quite a geek in that sense yeah so, I, I would say a geek yeah i mean i yeah, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I love software <laughs> yeah so but uh, for for a normal person, not normal composer, how much technology do you think they should be learning how or take control over? Again, it comes down to collaboration. If you feel that you've got the right collaborator mm -hmm. uh, who handles the technology and you handle the composition, great. You know, mm -hmm. but I feel that I mean, uh, especially post, I think the line was drawn by AR. Uh, mm -hmm. by A.R. Rahman uh, that I mean that's the generation where all of us got inspired and we all came in because we were we were the guys who were with you know we were the guys who, who were with the machines and mm -hmm. we knew software and we knew how to work the machines and you know we knew how to be able to be independent my mm -hmm. biggest nightmare has always been not having control yeah. <laughs> so so you know I'm a control freak so I like I like having that control over the session and I like yeah. being able to kind of move things myself and place things myself and do stuff yeah. but there are enough composers who are not like that and they've got other yeah. very able and technical people who can um, who can do that so again yeah. collaboration collaboration is key but the crucial thing in all this is are you coming with something fresh something new so, uh, mm -hmm. you know are your ideas unique Mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. so it's really yeah. it's really about that it's really about the approach it's uh, the, the the technology and the technique i personally think today the tech the technology is so simplified that even if you're not really a tech you know not a geek or a nerd you can still mm -hmm. you can still use it oh yeah absolutely i mean there is a garage band on your iphone you exactly. can actually you can be in a holiday vacationing somewhere and you could you could still be composing of course like a, multi-track composing oh can, yeah 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 you can make a full-on arrangement in garage band it's it's not yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's not to be trifled with true 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 um uh, okay so uh another very important aspect that uh, i think all of the young composers also should be knowing about the the legalities of the uh, of the composition and all the sort of the all the byproduct of so is that something that you it needs to be like outsourced or it is is it something that 
you need to have a like complete control on or how much you should be learning or knowing about your what you can or what you cannot do or how you know different ways you can earn revenues from the your compositions legalities uh, look the legal aspect of of this i can go on forever but the mm -hmm. the simple truth is that your bill will suffice if you've mm -hmm. given a client a bill that's mm -hmm. proof enough uh, of the fact that you have composed something and you you have you know you have rights uh, the other aspect of it is to mail it to yourself. Uh -huh. You can even email it to yourself. Um, but you need some sort of legal proof that you have made this piece of music. Uh -huh. uh, outside of that, I think you know today there are there are um, there are le there are forums, online forums where you can find out information about. It was not like that when we were starting, but today it's much much uh -huh. simpler. You can find template contracts. You can find all kinds of things to be able to make your life a little easier as a, as a budding yeah. composer to be able uh -huh. to protect your rights. But at the same time, I think, you know, um, you do need a, a collective to be able to ask questions to. And in that le at that level, we have an organization called MCAI, which is the Musician, Music Composers uh, Association of India, mm -hmm. where all of us together have um, created a sort of uh, collective where mm -hmm. we share information with younger uh, composers. So we share information with each other as well, just, mm -hmm. just in case, you know, um, somebody's being cheated or somebody's being, mm -hmm. you know, uh, deprived of their uh, of their rightful payment, mm -hmm. so we help with those kind of issues. Uh, they can go to mcai.co.in mm -hmm. and see uh, what work we do, and it's all working professionals. It's not it's not a legacy organization. It's mm -hmm. it's a, a whole bunch of working professionals who've gotten together to be able to help uh, explain things. And mm -hmm. uh, joining MCAI actually will help a lot of younger composers. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to understand what rights they have and how to be able to protect them without mm -hmm. having to spend a lot of money on lawyers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, th I think they also need to be aware of, uh, you know, where all they can utilize the same piece of music. Like, let's say, for example, uh, you have done G uh, Laser, which has that ding, 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 that, that riff. If some, some company, some brand comes to you and they just want to use just that riff, so, you know, ideally, you know, they should buy the rights of that riff from, from you. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, right? That should be the way that you go about it, which is that you can, you can actually split a song into many, many sections and you can, you can actually license many parts of the song. Like, for example, um, I think the baseline of Urvasi is, is, uh, is, uh, can be licensed separately from the rest of the song. So, mm -hmm. bum, bum, bum. That's yeah. one part of it. And then the rest mm -hmm. of it can be separate. So you can actually separate out whole sections of your song and you can license different parts of it for sure. So uh, that, uh, when, you, yeah. when you're build, building a song, are, uh, are you saying that uh, any composer should actually keep this like a building blocks in mind and then have a separate entity every building block as a separate entity well that's the that's the game right i mean the the, the most difficult part of of uh, of composition is is exactly that which is that how do you keep uh different parts of your arrangement yeah um can they be little hooks in themselves mm -hmm. you know uh, yeah. that's that's very difficult to do it's very very yeah. difficult to do and also it it so in sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work okay. and you can't force it mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time i mean for someone like me with jilees are up to there's no hope because the song lies with t series and mm -hmm. forever it shall be and i'll make nothing of that <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah i mean such as and, uh, and somebody might just come and make a recreation of that also oh yeah 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 and oh. i can i can't do anything about it Okay, okay. So let's not go there. I know. No, no, no. It's just it is what it is. I have. I mean, it is, it is yeah. what it is. It, I'm not. I'm not bitter about it at all. Okay. I understand okay. that's the reality of it. So. Okay. Uh, cool. I think. Uh, I think we have talked about a lot of different things, and it's it's been uh, such an amazing uh, conversation. Just the. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cut this part. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I think we have done a, a quite a extensive talk about like so many different things. This has been such a wonderful uh, discussion. Uh, I think uh, before we end, 
I just want to have a like a very high level uh, thought about like the long term sustainability of a of a musician as a composer. What, have you ever you know do you think about it? Or... Oh God! Right now it looks like AI might just put all of us out of business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like you, you might be seeing, all people are putting out like the the, the art, like the fine art uh, pieces of fine art by AI, and you can literally instruct. You know, do me a, a like a pencil sketch of Shiva holding bass guitar, and uh, so it'll they'll actually create a, like a uh, God, like Lord Shiva playing bass guitar, and yes. it'll do a pencil sketch of that. It's just yeah. it's just incredible. Yeah. So, and, yeah, and it doesn't even take the time. You, you've had four sips of coffee and it's done. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So what do you think about the uh, for, for a musician to have a long, sustainable career? So I, again, I, I come back to the same point, which is you need to have a, a vocabulary that is that is able to uh, take you beyond trends. So if you can last out from one trend and go to the, I mean, you know, if you can uh, rise above trends mm -hmm. and your music can use the trend of the time, but it can also have that classic timeless ability to be able to last, um, then I think you've got a career because mm -hmm. today what's happening is that streaming, one of the problems with streaming is that it doesn't really allow for um, breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's uh, it's very compartmentalized into genre and compartmentalized into more than genre. It's compartmentalized into trend. Mm -hmm. And I have a huge problem with playlists that are not diverse. Like mm -hmm. I can't listen to one style of music. I, mm -hmm. I can't. It drives me crazy if it's only like, for example, if it's like a metal playlist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it's a metal playlist for like one hour of metal. Mm -hmm. I'm just bored out of my skull, man. Mm -hmm. You know, because I get it. I love, I love it. But I, I love a good mix of music, and mm -hmm. streaming's taken that away completely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so there is very, there, there is a, it's all very compartmentalized. Which is that people who listen to metal will only listen to metal. I mean, that's the assumption, and it's a crazy assumption to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that is the assumption in the world right now. And I I mean, we have to live with it. But the important thing is that, like, for example, right now, there was this whole tropical trend in pop music. And now that's changed. And now synth wave is in. And then synth wave will go and something else will happen. So mm -hmm. the, the, all of that is just the packaging. The song mm -hmm. has to be timeless. The music, True. the melodies have to be timeless. So yeah. it's timeless writing that actually tells you, you know, like one of the things that happened this year, which was a very pleasant surprise was uh, somebody had cut a reel of Dil Duba to the footage of Brahmastra. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, a song from uh, Khaki. Uh, okay. Which was Sonu and Shreya song. Yeah, I know. Dil yeah. Duba, Dil Duba. So, yeah. So, so yeah, so Dil Duba, they had cut this reel of it, uh, which went viral on Instagram and like uh -huh. millions of views. Okay. And... Um, Again, it's you know that I, I I keep telling this to people, but they don't get it. You don't you don't know if a song is a hit song within six months. You know uh -huh. if a song is a hit song within six years, and uh -huh. if when it comes back like this, when it when a song comes back, which I made in two thousand two, yeah. which got released yeah. in two thousand three, and yeah. came back in twenty twenty two, and it still it still felt it still felt like fun. Yeah. Then you know then you know you've done something right in terms of uh, as a composer. Yeah, yeah, it's that satisfying. That's that's it's pretty cool to see that. No, absolutely. Uh, and I can tell you this about uh, your own compositions. They're like uh, songs like Tanha Dil, songs like uh, Jile Zara. This, these songs are, I'm not kidding. They're like timeless songs. Thank you. Uh, timeless songs. And I have I've seen this like conversations on Twitter where people have actually written that uh, when I die, just loop Jile Zara in my grave. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. That's so lovely. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, that that's how impactful uh, your music has been with people. Um, Thank you. You kind of uh, talked a little bit about uh, this, uh, you know, things going viral on internet and stuff like that. I don't see you a whole lot on social media, although 
honestly, this year I started seeing you putting out some like little uh, reels and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but, one minute music and things like yes, that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That was, that was yes. fun. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what is uh, like a quick uh, like a role of social media and how do you leverage it uh, as, as a composer? I don't think it's changed anything. You still have to make a great song. You sure. still have to work on, on your craft and you still have to move people and the trends will come and go and somebody will like kacha badam and you know somebody will like you know some <laughs> yeah. other nonsense and you and that, yeah. that's that's cool too that yeah, that's yeah, got yeah. its own totally. place you know yes absolutely but people forget that when you know there was a mambo number no. 5 that was a that was yeah, a yeah, yeah. that was a one hit wonder too you know mm -hmm. so it's not like pop music has never had one hit wonders the one hit wonders were viral songs mm -hmm. you know and yeah, it's yeah, okay exactly. it's the same thing it's nothing's really that different yeah but the important thing is, I think it's very important for musicians to to understand this. And I will, I, 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 this can't be repeated enough. Mm -hmm. Followers are not fans. You want fans. You don't want followers. Because a follower is, is following you because you are constantly providing them with something. A fan is somebody who likes you for your music. They're not following yeah. you because they want you to put out a video every day or a reel mm -hmm. every day. They're not doing that. They they know you're doing something behind the scenes and they're they're cool yeah. with that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you want you want fans, you don't want followers. I mean, followers is cool too, but you yeah. want them to become fans. That's the heart of it, you know. The connection has to be authentic. It has to be beyond yeah. the idea that you know you're going to provide them with some daily dose of dopamine. With that amazing note that followers are not fans and you, know, you want more fans than than followers, we'll, with that amazing note, we'll uh, just end the session today. I know there's like so much to talk with you about, like so many different things, but it can go on. But uh, definitely this has been one of the most insightful, insightful uh, sessions that I've done uh, recently. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Ram. Do you have any parting note for uh, for the students who will be uh, taking this course and uh, uh, like watching this video? Well, I think IIT Bombay is one of the great revered institutions of um, of our of our education system because it encourages out of the box thinking, because it encourages uh, free thinking, and it encourages you to innovate and uh, and uh, explore. It's yeah. not just about getting a degree. It's about finding who you are and, you know, going further. That has to be the journey. I think all your life, I don't, I, I feel that people stop after their educations and they get into jobs and, you know, life, life happens as John Lennon said, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. Mm -hmm. uh, but the important thing is always keep that student mentality, always stay humble, stay foolish, stay hungry. And, uh, Pursue that goal. Pursue that goal because the goal is not the important thing. The journey has to be beautiful. So awesome. that's that's uh, that's that's how I feel. That's my message for IIT Bombay. And as far as Live Demi is concerned, I think it's a great innovation. I think it's the kind of platform we need right now, where people can learn authentically. So much of our education system is almost anti-education, and Live Demi can help you think better it can help you look at problems in a completely new way it can look make you look at your career and your life in a completely new way it can open ideas for you that and avenues for you that you th didn't think existed and they, because they didn't exist before but now thanks to platforms like live demi you can think about these things and it's it's that that kind of personal innovation that i feel it changes the world because at the end of the day everybody's journey is unique and yeah. a cookie cutter education system is not going to cut it for the future. Awesome. That is so, so nice to hear. So sweet of you, actually. Um, and you have any plans? I know you said that uh, you did, uh, you played uh, Mood Indigo, which, which year? Oh, I can't even remember. I was in school. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope to see you at Mood Indigo playing uh, sometime very soon. Uh, sure. If they'll have uh, me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Rams, and have a nice rest of the evening. And I'll I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for having me, Satyajit, okay. Satyajit and uh, see you soon, man. Cheers. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.